Okay guys, well, cam bearings are in. And uh, the next step you have to do, you have to do. And do it at this point before you think you're just gonna send. Because yeah. if you do if you do it later when everything else is assembled, you'll be taking the whole engine apart just to try and see it, just to try and get your cam bearings in and out again. So we have got to get the cam test fitted. There's no way around it. And uh, when you're doing this, because it's, as the guys say, in, like in the LS world, they don't do it because they'd just rather not even look at it weird. But loop the shit out of it. I highly suggest, it's funny because I, I, <laughs> I told Robin about this. He told me I was crazy. But this Melling Mel Lube is legitimately the best engine assembly I've ever yeah. worked with. I've been pretty happy with it. It works really good. We've, yeah, we've yeah, I've been using it ever since. And, you know, we use a variety of different things. You can use engine oil or lubricant. Yep. I, I highly recommend this stuff. On everything except for piston rings, do not put it on your rings. Use engine oil. We'll get to that part of the video later. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, guys, and, and like liberal. Like, you, you know, it's, you're, you're talking about surfaces that are, and you don't need to do the cam lobes. Like, you watch these guys doing the cam lobes, and it's just... Well, the only thing with that is that if you're running a flat cam, a flat type of cam, yes, you have to lube your lobes, but that's a completely different process. We'll get that in another video someday, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm but, sure. But these ones here, just, and I would normally lube them heavier than this, but we're just doing a test fit. I don't want to have all that lube just hanging out loose in the engine when we flip it back over. Yeah. So we're just getting it on there, so we're not going to scratch up our, our journals uh, when we go to slide it through and make sure that this is actually going to fit in our bearings. And like... Like I said, I have another video coming for you guys comparing this cam or comparing cams, the Texas Speed Cam versus the stock cam, and then I think I can probably get a cam that's wiped. I'm pretty sure I can get a cam that's wiped, and then I'll be able to compare the VVT lifter to the non VVT lifter to the Texas Speed or sorry, the Rock Auto lifters because that's what they used. So you see how as I'm going through here. I've got lots of clearance, so I'm lining up my journals on spacing, right? But you see, I've got lots of space on it. It'll be the, the cam on these things. If they've got the tapered bearing, won't go tight until the last journal. So you just want to be careful to float it in here. To make sure that you don't score your cam bearings. So right now, I'm just trying. I'm keeping the pressure downward with my right hand. I'm just trying to feed it through until you get farther up there. You can normally have an assistant reach in there, or if you can, or you can, if you can reach all the way around, you can do it that way. I think we'll get Kyle to reach in there with a bar. A long screwdriver or some such device. So a lot of guys will have a threaded rod that goes into them too, but like I've seen lots where they robbed and said they. You know, it's one, those, it's one of those things that I mean, if you're building the same engine all the time, you can get more specialized tools for doing that particular engine. Is that gonna work for you there, Kyle? Okay, so let's slip right. Okay, hold on. There we go. Alrighty, last journal here, up we go, and now when you go in there, this one turned out to be a pretty decent fit, what I look for is sometimes you might have a small bit, a small burr or something like that, but you should be able to turn it by hand, so normally get it up to a spot where you can actually get a grip on it, sometimes it'll be a dowel or something, <laughs> and you just kind of give her a little bit of a turn, and I can turn that cam by hand, so that's, that's acceptable, that's an acceptable bearing fit. Yeah, you see, you can turn that. Yeah, very easily by hand. Yeah, so that means we that means we actually did it right this time, and uh, <laughs> so we'll be, uh, we should be good to continue. <laughs> Stuff happens, guys. Um, I learned a valuable lesson. Robin kind of gave me the look. You only got one set of cam bearings. <laughs> Fifty-eight dollars. Next time I build one, or next time you build one, think about it. Do you want to just buy a second set of cam bearings? Uh, maybe just start with the number four bearing because that's probably going to be the one that you mess up. I would say usually it's the first bearing you're going to mess up. We actually messed up the first two. Now that was a tool failure yes. issue. Yeah, the tool was broken. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, and we caught it right away. And the biggest thing is if you do make a mistake, I mean, if you catch your mistake, you know, if you catch a mistake and you don't assemble it wrong and incorrect, then you're going to go, you know, if, you, if you catch oh. it later, Mistakes happen as long as, we, you, as, long as you're correct. I wouldn't have noticed this till down, later, down, down the, the line. Like, we could have gotten. We, we were talking about assembling before you hit without having the cam here to test yeah. it as well. And yeah, it would have, we could have gotten. Us. We could have got five, six, seven thousand. We might have gotten two kilometers. We might still only get two kilometers because <laughs> I, I would not say that's going to happen. Fuck. 
So guys, we're uh, starting the ring gapping process, and this is going to be really hard to pick up on this style of camera. Actually, you know what? It picked it up really well. Uh, you can see the gap on the ring. So that is just how it comes out of the box. Out of the box, these Molly pins come gapped for NA, about 20 thou, 22 thou. Uh, we're after 28 thou. Uh, so we had started last video doing... The hand ring, file. Yeah, the hand file, and as Robin found out, they are... Um, That's 20. So just going through my feeler gauges now, just because you can see the numbers on them if you're doing this yep. yourselves. Going through my feeler gauges, figuring out where we're at so we know how much to touch them off. In the previous video, I'd said that I don't like using a using a powered filer, but when we got to take this much off, you know, I guess we'll have to. And these rings are... Um, so, but you want to know where you're at to begin with before you start 100%. to file. So now we have an idea as to how much you want to knock off to begin with. And that one is very tight. That is like an 18. And never, guys, do it in the top. Always push it down. If you look at if you look in here, th these were just honed. They weren't bored. It was just honed. But I mean, you can see where I'm below the top of my ring travel. You can see just a slight witness mark. And if you really measure, it's only a couple tenths. It's very small. But uh, for every, uh, basically, it's three three times um, the gap for every. Uh, uh, basically, it's three times uh, three times increase in gap for every thou uh, across the uh, across the diameter. So if you have a tenth here, that makes it almost a half a thou. I have a thousand spread, right? So you really want to make sure you're in a good spot to go. Yeah, so we are at 14 thou. So that means that this has got to be, t that means we got to take 10 thou off of there. So that's uh, significant. Well, more than 10. Yeah, that's right. 14 thou. So we're halfway there. <laughs> yeah. Basically <laughs> half, half of the gap that we need. So uh, another MMX performance. Thank you, MMX performance. You guys are the ones that uh, provided the rods. That, no discount and then this is this i honestly guys hemi parts are so hard to come by to begin with so pricing is pretty standard across the board uh but they do provide an excellent video on gapping per se but they it's from a professional standpoint this is professional but it's also more like how it's more, it's yeah, more, like more the, how not, it's going to be done not yeah a, not a production not a production yeah uh and we're 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 trying to provide somebody that can pick up the general tools and do this like anybody can go buy like the hand filer that we use or the the, the hand crank filer we use it's just a summit auto, or summit auto tool with a diamond wheat blade like it's so uh not expensive to get into gap your own rings uh the machinery to do the other stuff now that's a different that's that's <laughs> You can flex on it all you want. That's up to you. I don't care. Um, but this this build was not cheap by any means, by any stretch of the means. But I wanted to do it. I wouldn't. I want to say once, but it's it's never once. I want to do it right. <laughs> I want to do it right. So we're gonna get to it. Watch some more cinematic B-roll footage. Uh, Robin had to ask me, what is B-roll? I would not expect him to know that. I didn't know that two years ago. Let alone, like even a year ago, I barely used B-roll.
Oh, when you're putting on your piston rings, what you want to be checking is uh, basically there's a three-part oil ring, which is pretty standard. What we want to do is carefully get them out of the bag, no breaking or dropping. Now this is your expander. This goes behind the two oil rings itself. There's two thin oil rings, so it's a three-piece oil ring. Now these two ends go together. Normally, they want the, want the hook sides facing up, and that's where you can find it if you're trying to figure out where your gap is. You'll see that there's where, where these are normal, then when they put them together, so the pattern starts over again, so you can actually see it. And this actually has a paint mark right beside the mark. So this is a Molly Cleavite ring set, so it should be, you know, that should be pretty standard. That, you know, if you're using Molly Cleavite rings, you'll be able to find it like that. Install into the bottom groove. Most automotive pistons these days are a three are a three ring piston. You run into weird stuff, but really not worth talking about in this video here. So you see them there, how we're sitting directly in the groove, and it's all the way down. Now it's not sticking out proud, and the ends aren't overlapping. If the ends are overlapping, then you then you'll have a failure right away, or possibly break a ring when you install the piston. From there, we take our. Oil rings, there's two oil control rings that go in there and they're very, very thin, but they're very flexible. So you can actually roll them on as opposed to doing, uh, as opposed to using a different method, which I'll show you in a minute. You take these here and you want to put them on a gap. So right beside there, we know our gap is right beside our paint mark. I'm going to take this one, put it into the bottom on the left hand side, and then just roll it in and it's going to go tight against that expander. All the way around the piston, and see how my ring tried. See how my my expander tried to tried to break apart there. I want to make sure that's sitting in there together before you finish rolling the ring on. Then slide this one over like that. After you're done, of course, it's the one that's giving me trouble. There, so that one's below, and we can see we don't have anything sticking out. So that means that the expander's together, and this is held on top of the expander second control ring and this one will go on the right side of the mark so we don't have our expander gap and this these two lined up so in the oil ring this is how I always do it and you'll find different guys do it different ways but this one works for me come around to the right side so you got a good split between them all and then you fish this one on top of there and roll it all the way around there smooth like it's supposed to be so there we go, all we're getting, none of our gaps are lined up. Our expanded ring's floating in there, nice. So that's good there. Then we take our middle ring. On our, uh, on this ring set, uh, the coated ring is the middle ring, and the uncoated ring, the shiny, I think it's, I believe it's plasma, I'm not sure exactly, it could be chrome. Uh, that would be on the top, but our coated ring is in the middle. And we knew that when we open the bag, there's numbers on your bag, so it'll actually show you one, two, or three as to which position, starting from the top, your rings will be in. The M. There be sometimes they have a dot, sometimes they have an M, but there's normally a marking on the ring, uh, on the ring of some kind anyway, on the top side of the ring. So when I go to install this, I want to make sure I can see my mark facing towards the face of the piston. So what I do is I take the take our ring like that, we put both ends in the groove, and then gently work it out evenly. I like doing this because it doesn't put a twist on the ring; it just gently expands it with the, using the piston itself to expand it on there. You can use pliers and stuff like that, but I'm just not a huge fan of doing it that way. Like that, make sure we're floating. That means we're not bent, everything's straight, and we got no burrs. Because, we, uh, because, we, because these rings are filed, we want to make sure that the ends slide in and out without any burrs. That's good. And then we slide our top ring on. Same thing, mark up. And push it on gently. Just like that. Uh, middle rings fairly expanded, but when we go to put them on there, I'll show you how we line them up, how we uh, how we get how we align our ring gaps, which is not aligned, and uh, yeah, show you how we put it all, we get it ready to go in the engine. Hey, so I was putting this ring on, and I know we were talking in the video earlier that there was uh, about deburring the edge of the piston ring. So this one here I must have missed, and as I'm going back together, so I'm just putting a very gentle pressure on there, and it's not sliding in freely. That means that that one probably got missed or it didn't take all the burr off it, so it's got to come back off. But that's how you'll be able to tell that you're having a problem with the burr on the edge of a piston ring. Hey guys, well, thanks for making it to the end of the video. We are going to have part three dropping probably a little sooner than part two did. Uh, thanks for the tremendous support during part one. This was only about ring gapping and ring installation, not the alignment. Uh, 
we've got some pretty exciting stuff in the next video and more Hemi misery on my behalf. Take care. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.